Hi. Hopefully you can hear me. We've been having a little bit of technical issues. Um, let me know in the chat box if you can hear me so that I know that everything's working okay. Um, thank you so much for being on the call this evening. Um, we've already got 35 of you on, which is brilliant because um, this is going to be quite a specific call this morning for our, like, our absolutely top activists. Um, so brilliant that you are coming through. Um, I'm Chloe, by the way. Um, it says Holly Rigby because we're doing it from um, Holly, who is also joining us on the call tonight's laptop, um, and she'll be with us shortly. Um, but yeah, amazing to have you on the call. Uh, we are almost ready to get started. Are we ready to get started? We're almost there. While we are waiting, it's really nice for us to hear who is on the call. Um, so please do drop a message in the chat box. Tell us who you are, tell us where you're from, uh, tell us what you're looking forward to organizing because this is the first ever organizers training call um and what i'm really excited about tonight is the real focus on actually turning you to step up not just from being activists to actually being organizers we've got camden here hi um someone from west sussex amazing uh lots of people are saying they can hear me loud and clear great people are not getting any audio so you've got a couple of minutes just to make sure that you have the audio going well um try headphones if it's not working um try playing around with your computer settings if some of you are getting it it means that everything's right from our end so if there's issues then it is something to do with so do try to fix that um amazing um i am a bit worried that our internet connection is not great but hopefully it will be fine. Uh, okay okay so without further ado i think we are ready to get started um rory over to you hello hello hi everyone my name is rory i'm part of the training team here at momentum uh, and yeah uh, just to kind of reiterate like welcome everyone to the Thanks so much for joining us all. Uh, it's absolutely amazing to have you all here tonight. This is actually the first Zoom call that some of us will be doing tonight. Uh, so is actually a veteran today in helping us out, but this is super exciting for us because it's a little bit something that's a little bit new, something a little different. And yeah, so this uh, this organizers conference call, uh, we're gonna be talking and sharing a little bit about what we've already kind of done so far, and more importantly, how you can get involved right now in campaigning for labor. Um, so if you haven't already, just one more time, because we are going to be using the, the chat uh, a little bit, just make sure that you've got the chat box open. Um, it should be to the right of the video screen. Um, and if you're calling by phone, then unfortunately, that means that you might not be able to see the chat, but that's okay. Um, we'll make sure that everybody gets all the information that we're posting in there as well. Amazing. Rory, can you get the um, everything up on this screen, please, so that we uh, have everything? Let just go. Um, while you are waiting for us to just finalise our final, we're actually good to go now. I think we're good to go. <laughs> that was us finalising. <laughs> uh, well, okay. I think we are. I think we so, are. So, so before <laughs> before we start, um, as I as I said, we're going to be posting a lot of things in the chat, and the first thing that we're going to be posting, and the main thing that we'll be basically posting pretty much for the entirety of this call, is going to be the link to our organizers WhatsApp broadcast list. And Chloe here is gonna tell you all about why it's so important that right now, you click on the link that's about to be posted in the chat box. Don't worry, in a minute, in a minute, <laughs> I'm gonna switch over and do the tech and then everything's gonna run really smoothly. Uh, so for now, just bear with us. I'm gonna talk you through some basics uh, and then I'll make sure all the links come through in the chat box. Um, so all good. Um, amazing. Can I start telling them about organizing? Yes, absolutely. Right? Yeah, please. That's why I'm there. <laughs> uh, so, hey everyone, it's so great to be with you on the call this evening. Um, I'm going to talk you through what we mean by being an organizer and why it is so important. So, we have now got exactly 35 days till the general election, and those 35 days are going to be the most important of our lives. The order before us couldn't be clearer. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's either disaster capitalism with Boris Johnson or socialism with Jeremy Corbyn. So, we're up against a lot. It's going to be a really tough fight ahead. Uh, we know Boris Johnson has the billionaires on his side. He's got the mainstream media. He's got much of the establishment. But we can win this election. And we do have a really incredible plan um, to make sure that we do. So our plan to win is really simple. It relies on three things. First of all, people power. So that means mobilizing more people than ever before. In this means getting all of our activists out on the streets, having one-to-one -one persuasive conversations, and helping to make sure that we get out the Labour vote. Second of all, it's about targeting key marginal constituencies. This means being super clear and super careful about how we can direct our campaigning so that it has maximum impact. 
Finally, and probably most importantly of all this evening, our plan to win relies on us asking all of you to step up. So to do more, way, so much more than you've ever done before, to take time off work, to put aside your evening plans, to cancel whatever you were going to do this weekend, so that you can do absolutely everything you can to campaign for the next 35 days to help us win this election um, and get a Labour government. Uh, so this is exactly why um, stepping up to be an organiser is so important. The stakes are really high and it's no longer enough for you to all just to go out and canvas and do all of that. That's all really important, but we need you to do even more because uh, we need to do even better than we did in 2017. We need to make sure that Labour not only makes gains, but we actually have a Labour government led by Jeremy Corbyn uh, in, 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 in power. Um, so this means not just going to a canvas, but actually setting up a let's go group to make sure that your friends with CLP. It means not just going to a persuasive conversations training, but actually running your own one, which is what Rory and Holly, who's going to be on the call shortly, are going to be talking through this evening. Um, so if we're going to win this election, we need all of you to do this. Uh, we need all of you to step up to become organisers, to mobilise other people, to be putting on events and to be helping our campaign grow exponentially, giving us the people power that we need to make sure that we win. Um, so this week, I'm really excited that we've launched our incredible organiser homepage. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check it out. Uh, this is your bible for stepping up in the weeks to come, uh, for hosting your own events, for setting up Let's Go groups. All the information you need to help us step up is on that homepage. Um, the other really important thing that we need you to do this evening uh, is to join our organiser broadcast list. So this will make sure you get all the key information you need to help you organise for this election. Um, this might be today, my campaign map has just been upgraded so that you can now add events. So if you're on our organiser broadcast list, you'll, get, you'll be the first people to have that information. You will literally know straight away. Um, adding events feature is now live on my campaign map. You can now use that. Uh, very soon we're going to have let's go groups added to it too um, so if you are on our broadcast list for organizers you'll be told um hey if you've got a let's go group then you can add it on there um so whether it's a new resource which has gone live or whether it's our key priority this week so this week final week for virtual reg all efforts going into that um, if you're on our organiser broadcast list, you are going to get the key information that you need. Um, it's going to be a really, really important way to help you work super effectively in the weeks to come. Uh, let's see if we can get everyone on this call signed up tonight. So has the, Rory, has the uh, link gone out in the in the chat box? It has. It has the a couple of times. It should be the second last message. Maybe we can send it one more time just before we get started. The link to the WhatsApp broadcast list. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. And um, so please do sign up there. Um, we have got, how many people have we got on our call? I think we've got, is it 44 people well, it on our like call? It looks like 44 right Absolutely now and brilliant. climbing. 44 and going up still. People on this call, so we want to get all 44 of you um, to join our, it's called the Let's Go Broadcast List. Um, it's the official name. I've been using the wrong one. Um, okay, sorry. So I was actually going to explain, explain this, but um, our amazing... Um, Comrades on tech have told me that few of you are asking what is a let's go group. Um, so there is actually a few things I want to add if that's okay. Mm -hmm. right yeah, so we have time. Um, so I've kind of done a whistle stop tour of organizing. Um, if you have any questions, if you're not sure about anything, then head over to the organize uh, at people <coughs> momentum homepage. So it's called, it's just the, the URL is organize.peoplesmomentum.com. There's loads of really amazing information there where you can see in more detail, um, like all the information you need about the things I'm talking about. Um, really quickly, a Let's Go group might range from a WhatsApp group with you and three friends to a huge public Facebook group with over 300 people. It's any sort of group, which is about saying to friends, family, neighbors, uh, colleagues, whoever it is saying, um, I'm going to this canvas on Saturday, can you come to? Um, so it's basically a group which has the purpose of mobilizing people to get out canvassing, particularly people who haven't canvassed otherwise. Um, if that sounds kind of daunting, um, like don't be put off. It's If you have never been canvassing before and you set up a WhatsApp group with one or two of your friends to say, hey, I've never been canvassing before, I'd quite like to try it out. I think this is going to be really important. Would you be up for heading down to this campus with me? You have stepped up. You have become an organiser. You've become somebody who's mobilising other people. So it doesn't always have to be a really big, showy, massive thing. It can be really simple. But it's about that kind of principle of mobilising people you know, um, of tapping into that kind of 
personal relationships and of thinking not just what can I do, but how can I help to create, build, um, create a stronger movement with more people involved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, amazing. I, there will be chance for more questions later, um, but I do just want to emphasize that this call tonight is about asking people to step up to be organizers. And that might mean a different thing for some of you. We're gonna be hosting phone bank parties. For some of you, that might be you and two friends getting together with at the weekend um, and calling people using our phone banking system. For others of you, it might mean organizing a huge massive public event, um, but that doesn't matter at all. It's not necessarily about how confident you are or how experienced you are. It's about the principle of I'm prepared to go the extra mile. I'm prepared to organize events for other people and I'm prepared to step up and mobilize others so that we can work together to win this election. Um, so yeah, amazing. I feel like I have gone on for more than long enough. Um, so I'm now gonna say goodbye. Um, I'm gonna be over on the, the, the tech laptop, which is off screen. Um, and I will be helping to um, read and answer questions. Um, so I might come back in again later there's anything you need me for um, but otherwise you're I mean you're in incredible hands with Rory and Holly uh, who's going to switch over with me um, and have a really really amazing call uh, and I cannot wait to start seeing your events go up on my campaign map to start seeing even more let's go group spring up um, this is such an exciting election and just a huge huge thanks to you because if you're on the call this evening that means you're one of our most committed activists um, and you're one of the people who's really going to play a really 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 big role uh, in getting the socialist government that we all deserve in 35 days time uh, so yeah thanks again and see you all soon great thanks so much for that chloe i almost felt like i had to do a round of applause but that would, <laughs> that would feel a bit silly for a conference call it's just me clapping on the camera um <laughs> Great, yeah, so as, as Chloe mentioned, there are so many different ways that you can get involved in organizing this campaign, but what we wanna focus on tonight is one particular way that you can do that, and that is organizing your very own Let's Go training events within your communities, for your friends, for your family, for basically anybody that you know uh, who you think would be interested in going out there and canvassing and is just looking for that little bit of extra skill that they might need in order to be as effective as possible when they do that. So what we're gonna try and do now is we are going to set up a screen share so that you can all see uh, the training that, that Holly is about to deliver for you. And we're basically gonna walk you through everything that you need to know to organize your own training event, all the things that you need to talk about there and how you can then mobilize people to go out there, door knock and win this election. So let's see if this is going it's to looking work. Good. It's looking yeah, good. we can see it, it's that's perfect. Really so let's get it into Amazing. full screen and uh, let's go back to the start. Great, so I'm gonna hand over to Holly and I'm gonna be watching all of you on the chat. So if you have any questions, where we've broken this down section by section. So at the end of each part, we'll basically kind of open the floor. So just type your questions in, let us know, and we'll try our very best to answer them basically. And uh, hopefully we'll get all the way through the end as, uh, in, a, in a decent amount of time. Ooh. All right guys, so um, welcome to the training section where we're gonna um, explain to you um, how you can deliver some door knocking training for you and uh, whoever the group of people you are delivering it for. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you through the training step by step. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the slides that we would send to you um, and I would talk you through the rationale behind those slides and how you would deliver them if you were delivering this session yourself. And the really key idea behind this is that we are not just teaching you how to door knock, we're teaching you to teach others how to door knock. So all of this session today is going to be doing that thing. All right, so let's imagine that you have set up your um, training and event. Um, you are perhaps in your CLP group or in your momentum group, perhaps you're in your living room or uh, maybe you're even in the pub. Um, this is what you would start with if you were delivering this training session. So just like we've just done with you, you want to start your session with some kind of rallying opening speech. Now, you don't need to be a kind of tub thumping speech maker to be able to do this. You just need to have some key messages that are gonna inspire others around you. We have written a little script for you, which you can see on the screen at the moment, that you could just use or read out um, in your kind of like most rallying uh, uh, persona um, to get the people around you really excited. But the key, the key point of this is to encourage people to say that every single conversation matters on the doorstep. Door knocking is important, phone banking is important, trying to convince your mates in the pub is important because we know that the main thing that we have is hundreds of thousands of Labour Party members. So, um, 
once you, this should only take you about um, two or three minutes to deliver and you can adapt it in the way that suits you. So once you've inspired your members, you will then go on to explain how the session that you're delivering is going to be facilitated. Um, we have some kind of rules for, um, or guidelines really, that um, really help people um, who are gonna facilitate a session. So um, we say that when we're doing feedback from any activities, that we really encourage women, BAME people, and new activists to speak. We know that these are the people that often aren't represented, particularly when we're having group discussions. We also recommend that you really encourage people to step up and step back. We want people to be active participants in our workshops, but we want them to encourage other people to contribute as well. Super important that you avoid jargon and you encourage others to avoid, uh, avoid jargon. Some of us have been on the left and in the movement for a long time. Some of us, this election might be the first time they've got involved in politics. Um, uh, also, we want to make sure that all of our meetings are super comradely, that they are friendly, even when we have some political disagreements, um, and that you make sure that you kind of really encourage people to be supportive, and where they're challenging, do that in a way that people feel comfortable with. So you would say that right at the beginning, so that everybody knew um, what the call was about, uh, sorry, what the, how the session was going to be facilitated. So that's your setup for um, your training session. Now let's get into the nitty gritty of what the training will actually include. So the first activity that um, is great thing to do is to get people to discuss canvassing. Now, if you've got a group of people who have never canvassed before, you would ask them the question, why do we canvass? But if you've got a group of people who have canvassed a lot before, it's great to start with a discussion of what works well in canvassing and what doesn't. The idea of this activity is that you're really encouraging people to think about why they're there and why they're doing what we're doing. This is a winter election, as we all know, so getting people out on the doorstep, people need to know why they're out doing what they're doing and what is effective. So people feel like their deepest, darkest December evening, uh, door knocking wherever you are, is something that is really, really effective and important to do. So you would ask um, participants to discuss these questions in groups. You would give them about three minutes for discussion. Then you'd bring everybody back together and you'd have a whole group discussion for about five minutes um, on the ideas uh, that have been discussed in the groups. And what you can see on my screen at the moment is that there are some kind of key ideas that we think normally come out um, in the sessions and you can encourage those um, to come out more in your facilitation. Just a general point as well that I should have mentioned before, when we send you these slides, all of the timings for each activity are on the slides themselves. So you can see how long each thing takes, although it's up to you, you can be flexible about the timings for these as well. These are not fast, um, fast and hard rules, but they're just a guidance from us. So you set out why you're there. Then the next activity that you do is when uh, we share our personal stories. This section is called personal stories, what, what motivates us to knock on doors for labor. Now, the idea behind this is that we think on the doorstep, people really connect when they don't just see you as a sort of faceless volunteer, that there is a sense of relationship building between you and the person whose door that you're knocking on. And actually, if we're going to rebuild really those relationships, we need a clear sense of why we motivate, why we knock on doors for labor. <coughs> So at this point, you would ask um, the participants in your training group with the person next to them to share their personal story. Now, it might be a story of hope. It might be a story of injustice or inspiration. It might be something to do with your job. For example, when I'm door knocking, I'm a secondary school teacher. I work in Newham, which is a really deprived borough in London. And so I often share about the impact that funding cuts to my school have had, on, have had on the students that I teach and also what life is like for my students outside school. So I talk about the fact I know my students use food banks um, and the kind of desperate effect that that has on their education. Um, but for you, maybe it's something to do with your family that you feel really passionate about labor or something in your community. Now, it really helps if you don't mind sharing your own personal story in the training, and then you can send participants away to share their story with the person next to them. Once they've done that, then you bring everybody back together and you ask people if they feel comfortable to do to share their stories to the whole group. Now, these don't need to be your deepest, darkest secrets. Um, they can be um, really anything and really just encourage people to share only what they feel comfortable with. Um, okay.
So, have we got any questions, Rory, as we go through the activities? Are we okay? <laughs> we haven't had any yet, but does anybody, does anyone want to take a moment to ask a question or is, is everything quite clear so far? It's the, uh, the daunting <laughs> silence. <clears throat> it looks like everything is okay so far, so it looks cool. like we can keep going. Fantastic. All right, so once you have um, done this activity, then you move on to our next activity, which is really the key part of how you have a conversation on the doorstep. Now, some of you might be quite familiar with something we called shoot reload. Somebody asks you, why should I vote for the Labour Party? And often we're tempted to unload all our arguments in one go. Well, you know, there's going to be free tuition fees and a four day week and they going to fund the NHS and we go on and on and on but actually we need to know what the person that we are door knocking really cares about the most um, so in order to avoid this we have a, um, a kind of framework that we use to make sure that we're really targeting that voters concerns so if you were delivering this training session you would explain the concept of shoot reloads the fact that we know that we need to be really persuasive and really, really focused. So you would explain this and then you would explain that's the rationale for why we use something called the response cycle. Now, here's our response cycle. Um, now this is the steps that you take on the doorstep to have a conversation. Um, and what you would do when delivering the training session is exactly what I'm about to do for you, is you would explain to the participants each of the steps um, on this cycle and then ask them to practice it. So for the purpose of now, I'm going to explain each step step by step and then you would have a go and then your participants would have a go at practicing it. So what does it mean when we say introduce? Now, fairly obvious, uh, you're smiling, you've got a friendly greeting, you let the voter know who you are, that you are a community member, you know, that you're not just from the Labour Party, that you are a volunteer and an activist. Um, and also, of course, say your name. Now, one of the things that some of us find quite challenging is that before you've said anything to um, the voter on the doorstep, you must ask them how they are planning on voting in the election. This is really, really important because it's super important that um, when somebody is, uh, when you're having a conversation on the doorstep, you are making sure that you're having a conversation with the highest leverage, leverage person. So if someone says they always vote Labour, you don't need to have a persuasive conversation with them. You would shake their hand and say, thank you very much for your vote and goodbye. If someone says they always vote Conservative and they seem pretty clear about that, it's unlikely you're going to change their mind. So you would respectfully say goodbye to them too. Now, if someone says they voted Labour or Conservative last time but now aren't sure, these are the people you need to be targeting your persuasive conversations to. We know we need to have two million conversations in the next five weeks and we need to make sure they're with the people who are undecided and so these are the people that we want to target. Similarly, anyone who says they haven't decided yet at all or even someone who says they don't vote, it's a perfect opportunity to have a conversation with somebody about why not only should they vote, but they should vote for the Labour Party. So it's really important to tell your activists in the training section that you ask somebody how they voted in the last election straight away so that we can target our conversations in the most important way possible. Okay, so you've introduced yourself, you've got a targeted conversation, you've got somebody who is undecided how they vote in the election, what do we do next? Um, and I'm just going to have a quick sip of water from my uh, red water bottle. <clears throat> so while, while Holly is doing that, is everybody kind of clear so far in terms of how you are going to be kind of like explaining all of this to people when you're organising this training, when you're actually delivering it? Is there, does anyone have any questions about like any of the activities that you might be getting people to do? Uh, any of the particular ways that you might talk about some of this stuff? Uh, I mean, like, like Holly said, at the end of this call, you're, you're not only going to get these slides that we're using right now, but actually already online, uh, we have a, a script that basically word for word will tell you exactly what you need to say. Mm. I mean, I, you know, hopefully you'll maybe do it once or twice even, and you'll be able to do it just kind of off the top of your head, but that you need to deliver this training. Yeah. Cool. Right. I'm ready to go back in. Um, so you've introduced yourself and you know that you're having a conversation with the, with the right person, someone who's undecided. The next thing that you do is you ask voters what's important to them. That's, you really need to make sure you ask a question first. And these are some of the questions you can answer. Is there anything you think needs to be changed in this country? What is your biggest concern in this election? Perhaps even what is your local issue that you're concerned about? And so straight away, you'll get a sense of what that voter is interested in. Because for example, they might be really interested in NHS funding, 
But in your shoot reload, you've already talked about tuition fees, something that they are not that interested in. So getting this question there straight away really, really helps for you to work out what this voter's main interest is. Then, whatever their concern might be, you need to show that you are there to listen and engage to them. So you have to acknowledge that voter's concerns. Now, some of the sentence stems we use for this are lots of people seem to think that, I understand that, I can sympathise with this concern. And even if perhaps something they say something that we really don't agree with, you can say, I've heard that before, so that you don't have to feel like you are saying that you understand it or that you um, sympathise with it, but just that there are other people who feel that same way. And acknowledging that makes, helps you build relationship on the doorstep. So once you've acknowledged the person's concern, what do you do next? So that takes us to our next step, or Rory has got something he would like to say. Uh, no, actually, just continue. We can, we'll, Jessica, we'll come back to your question once Holly's got through the response cycle, I think. Fantastic, we'll excellent. <clears throat> okay, so um, once someone has given you uh, the kind of broad sense of what they're interested in, it's really about isolating the thing that is most important to them. For example, somebody on the doorstep might say to you that their biggest concern is immigration. But often when we drill down into this by asking more questions, we actually work out that it's something um, different to that. So for example, there's some sentence starters that you can use. Um, you mentioned you're worried about immigration. Is the strain on the end or is it the strain on the NHS or housing that you're worried about. You mentioned you're worried about Jeremy Corbyn, are there any of his policies in particular that you're not sure about? Often we know that this is the best way to get to the root of really what people's concerns are. And what you'll see is that you're really encouraging the people that you're training to ask as many questions as you can to really get a sense of that voter before you go in and with your arguments about how Labour is gonna change things for them. Now, this is also the most difficult bit because sometimes there are some challenging things that get put up. But what we do have is a fantastic resource on difficult conversations that comes up on the doorstep that we'll be sending to um, all of our activists. And that goes through some of the key difficult questions that comes up and how to reframe them and speak to the most important issues. So we've isolated our most important issue. The voter has told us they're concerned about immigration, but actually what we've realized is they're really, really worried about the NHS. They can't get an appointment at the doctors. Uh, they can't get their, um, their child um, into a dentist appointment or things like that. And then now we can really target about the policy that is going to be most important to them. So we move on to addressing their concerns with a policy. So it's at this point, we really introduce the policy that's most important to them, and we really focus our message and tailor it to this person's concerns. Now, not everybody is going to be a policy expert, and you're not expected to be a policy expert. We've got a fantastic resource on the top policies, top most popular Labour Party policies, and we would really recommend that you read that before, and you have that link to send to the activists that you are delivering this training to, so that people really feel like they have a sort of a range of policies at their fingertips. Um, and, you know, a sentence then you can, use, you can use that is, did you know that the Labour Party is going to you know, funds the NHS and outsourcing and the privatisation of the NHS or stop the NHS being sold off to Donald Trump like Boris Johnson wants it to be doing. Um, and at this point, you know the NHS is their main concern, so you can really target your policies in that way. So you've addressed their concern with the policy. Hopefully they've listened to you. Then the final thing that you need to do when you're having this conversation with um, voters on the doorstep is you must ask them for support or gauge what they are now thinking. This is because for the um, voter ID system, which lets us know who is voting Labour in that constituency, so we can get out the vote on election day, we need to know which households are voting Labour or planning to vote Labour and which households are not. So the final thing you've got to ask those voters is, can we count on you to vote Labour on election day? Or will you register to vote? Or if they're really keen, will you put up this poster or consider joining the Labour Party? Now, when it comes to this response cycle, it doesn't always go exactly neatly. Often, human conversations are much more messy, and you might go back and forth between the different steps. But we really encourage that you don't go through roughly that cycle more than three times, because we think at that point, um, it, it would often feel like the voter probably isn't going to be convinced, and there might be other people that you need to talk about. So you would explain that to the people that you are training, and then you would ask them to practice. So ideally, in your um, training session, you would get your participants 
into groups of three. One of them would be a Labour door knocker, one of them would be a voter, and then one of them would be observing the conversation in order that they could give feedback on how that response cycle went. One thing that you need to remind your participants is some people wouldn't get quite carried away with this activity, is if, if you are the person who is the voter, just make it quite straightforward with them. Don't give them too hard a time. Let the Labour door knocker practice the response cycle without having a very, very difficult voter, even though we know we sometimes might encounter them. So you would, in the trios, people would swap around the roles and they'd have five minutes each roughly to practice. And then after that, you would take feedback on the experience as a whole group. What do people find easy? What do people find difficult? Because that helps everyone in the group to learn from what everybody else has done. And the other thing that you can do that we really recommend is to help people out when they're practicing the response cycle in their circles is that you would have this slide here with just the sentence starters. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a projector, you can project it. But often what we do is we just write these up on a um, flip chart paper or on a board so that they're really visible. So when people are practicing the response cycle for the first time, they've got that to visually remind them. Because it can be quite difficult to remember the six steps if you haven't done so already. So it's super important that you have something that your participants can see so that they know what to do. So, the response cycle is really the key part of this training it's the thing that is hopefully going to make your participants feel the most confident on the doorstep so if you are delivering this training and perhaps you've only got half an hour spend half an hour doing the response cycle the response cycle is the most important thing you will do because it is the thing that really makes people feel confident that they have a guide for what they do step by step when they're on the doorstep talking to voters now the final thing that you will be doing in your um, training session is you will be mobilizing. You'll be closing the session by saying, how can we put these things into practice? Now, you don't even need to worry about this because um, Rory has made some fantastic resources for you so that you can really, really mobilize everybody around you. The first thing that you can do is distribute canvassing resources. The handbook, the door knocking script or the data sheet, if you can print it out, fantastic. But otherwise, you can just send a link to everybody. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can do is you can read out our mobilizing script, which has all the different ways that people can get involved in this general election, whether it's going canvassing their nearest, in their nearest marginal or the other things that are in included. So. Any questions at this stage? Yes. Maybe particularly on the response cycle, because that's probably the, uh, the big meat chunk yeah. in the middle of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Does everybody kind of understand how they might go about explaining the response cycle to people? And maybe also that activity, because I think that is kind of the key thing, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like mm -hmm. getting people into those groups of three and just giving them as much time as you possibly can to basically yeah. practice those six different stages of what you're mm -hmm. supposed to be doing. Um, how's everybody feeling so far? Either people are typing an awful lot. So Oscar asks, if you organize a public session, do you know who's coming slash where to hold it? Um, so <clears throat> by that, do you mean? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so I mean, if you're organizing a public session, um, so perhaps you're organizing something in your CLP or your momentum group, um, then you would need to go through your CLP or Momentum group and see if you can arrange a venue yourself. Now, you might have some venues that are commonly quite used in your local area, and perhaps your CLP will be able to give you a little bit of money to pay for a room. Um, we, we won't be funding from Momentum um, Central for that, just because we've got very strict um, regulations around us um, uh, for election spending. But the other thing, of course, that you can do is you can organise, and that would be for public sessions, but you could organise private sessions. Why not have a canvassing training party, 10 people in your living room, perhaps 10 people in the pub or somewhere that you have access to? Now, if you're organizing a public session, you're gonna put it online on my campaigns map, which I can show you right now. Which we're gonna look at right now. Which I can show yeah. you right now. So, um, how do I get into something? Let's just question? pull that down slightly. Click on, oh, yeah, I've got it, I've got it. there you go. Okay, so let me show you my, how do I make this move now? Let me show you how to use my campaigns map and add an event if you are planning on doing a public event. Now, if you're doing a private event, you don't need to do anything, okay? But if you're doing a public event, this is how you would do it. You would press this little uh, plus button once you've already signed in. Let's say you are organizing a training event in 
Bolton, perhaps. So, because it's a training event, you've got four types of events that you can choose from. And obviously this event is going to be a let's go training. You are training others on how to campaign and persuade voters on the doorstep. Now, your description, um, you could um, copy and paste the text that we were going to send to you, uh, which would describe um, the event itself, or you, you might want to put any details in there, um, where you would add your description in. Practical bits, if you've got a, um, if you have a venue sorted out already, perhaps um, you're the CLP hall where you normally do your events is, is available, and you've done it there, then you write your street address in there. So. Let's say you're doing it in uh, Bolton Town Hall. You would write it here. Um, oh, there actually is a Bolton Town Hall. Perfect. Um, <laughs> and and then you would put your start time in here, which does this with this uh, quite nifty little tool. Let's say you're doing it at eight thirty next Thursday. And then if you are making a WhatsApp group for um, your training um, for the people who are going to att attend your training, you can post a link in here. And then once you've got all those details in there, you will create an event. Now, it won't go automatically onto my campaign map. What will happen is it will come through to us and we will make sure that it goes up on the site. That should be a very quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how you do a public meeting. Um, are there any no, next questions? There are a couple of questions. Shall we uh, stop the sharing so yes. that we can just go, we don't need to look at that anymore. So hopefully that, Perhaps does it? Looks like it did. Great. Oh no, it did not. Well, that's fine. We'll just stick with it. So, um, Ryan, you asked, <clears throat> uh, would we recommend reaching out to an experienced canvasser from the CLP and asking if they'd run it or help run the training? I guess that kind of comes down to um, what your vision is for the training that you want to organize. There, there are lots of people who just want to organize a training for a couple of their mates, and it's something that they're going to do right before they go canvassing. So it's just kind of like them talking through what Holly's just been saying, kind of like getting people a bit up to speed with what's going on. Um, if you want to do something that's a bit bigger, so if you kind of feel like actually there's lots of people in my CLP, uh, I want to try and get them all to come to this event and you feel more comfortable with somebody who has a little bit more canvassing experience, you can definitely do that. But what we've hopefully tried to do, especially with the script that you can find online, and I'll, I'll repost the link in here, but it's on uh, organize.peoplesmomentum.com. Um, you'll be able to do this without somebody, you know, even if you don't feel like you have as much canvassing experience as you'd like to do, because we, we definitely basically want people to understand that, you know, this is just about talking a little bit about how you can be the best canvasser you possibly can be. And I guarantee you there will be people who will come to your event if you make it public, who will be able to kind of stand up and say, actually, you know, I've, you know, I've done this before. Here's my own experience as well. Um, I think that's really important um, to just kind of always come back to the fact that, you know, this might be the first time you're doing this training. So never feel like you can't say that to somebody as well mm. when you're starting. So even if you feel a little bit less experienced in terms of canvassing or if you've never organized a training before, um, I think it's definitely worth giving it a go. And it's definitely worth saying that at the start. I mean, that's why I, I did my first training yesterday. Mm. Uh, and that's the first thing I said. It was in front of 200 people in Manchester. And I think they were a lot nicer to me as a result of it. Mm. Um, do we have any other any other questions? No, it looks like we're all okay. So does anyone, yeah, just final final chat, I suppose. Does anybody have any questions either about, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, about how, uh, how you organize this? How do we get access to dialogue? So I don't think we have the answer to that question um, no. because we won't have it until it's, it's released. Yeah, um, which is happening tomorrow. Think. Annabelle, which I think is happening tomorrow, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, is there a direct number to try? I think if you click through to the link, then you might be able to see the number they can try directly. Um, dialogue is, what is dialogue? You can probably explain it better than I can. No? It's the, <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the auto dial, yeah, exactly. It's the auto dialing app uh, that you can basically use to phone bank people. Um, so it saves you an awful lot of time, right? Like instead of having to kind of manually dial in everybody's number, you'll just kind of like log into it. Uh, it will cycle through numbers. When someone picks up, you have the pleasure of speaking to them. Um, and if they don't, then it kind of just keeps going and going and going. Yeah. It's a really useful tool. And I absolutely hope that it comes out uh, sooner rather than later, because there are a lot of people who are, who are wondering about, about phone banking. Are there any other specific questions around either how to organize a let's go training event in your CLP for your friends at your local pub in your community? 
Um, was there anything that Holly was talking about that you want us to explain again um, or that you just want us to, you know, give you a couple more examples around? Well, we've got some confident uh, door knocking trainers on this yes. call. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, okay, great. Well, I think that's, that's probably all for the training then. So, so we absolutely can't wait to see all your training sessions up on my campaign map if you're going to be doing them publicly. Uh, and before we wrap up, I just want to ask everybody one more time uh, for maybe some of the people who have joined a little bit later, as well as uh, everybody who's been here from the start. If you haven't already, I think we're going to repost the link to the organizers WhatsApp broadcast list. So this is going to be an absolute time saver for you when it comes to finding out uh, the most useful thing that you can be doing for campaigning. Mm -hmm. Are you going to come onto organizing campaigning, getting data, etc.? So, um, someone has asked about whether we're going to come on to, um, about how to organize a canvassing session. Now, we're not expecting you to organize a canvassing session. On my campaigns map, it will tell you about all the canvassing sessions are that you can join. And when you get to those canvassing sessions, all the data sheets will be printed out for you already. So you don't have to worry about doing any of that. You will just turn up, for example, to Kensington, door knocking um, session, and the organizer there will give you your board um, and you can just go out and go. So the whole point of the people on this call in particular is that you just need to organize the training so people feel confident then to go out canvassing. You don't need to worry about organizing canvassing sessions yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be done across every single marginal with our community organizing unit. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Okay, um, so and someone's asked about what about phone bank, organizing phone banking. So one of the things that we will definitely be doing, and if you go and check out uh, organize.peoplesmomentum.com is organizing phone bank parties. We talked about it a little bit at the start. Uh, part of the reason why we haven't really got into an awful lot of detail about it yet is because we're also waiting for dialogue to be launched. Mm -hmm. um, so the minute that's launched, I think we've actually got a, another conference call like this one scheduled for Sunday um, at eight o'clock. If you get on that WhatsApp broadcast list, we will make sure uh, that you get the details for that. And that's going to be all things phone banking, organizing your own phone banking parties, getting people there and everything that we can do uh, to make sure that your phone banking is as kind of powerful and useful as possible. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so we definitely will keep you posted on that. Um, so let's try and post that link uh, one more time. Oh, that's a question from Jessica. If I organize an event at my house, will my address be public on the site? So... Yes, if you want to organize an event at your house, um, but you also want to make it public and you want to put it on my campaign map, then you would have to use your house address. So perhaps if I think you... we recommend not doing that, don't we? If we're doing it at your house, then yeah. probably you'd want to do it as a private event. So maybe it's that you want to like publicize it to your CLP. So maybe your CLP's got a WhatsApp group where you don't mind putting your address in, but we wouldn't recommend you putting your personal home address on the my campaigns map site. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so perhaps if you're going to do it at your own house, then maybe you want to do something that's a bit smaller, maybe more private. Yeah. You might just want to invite people directly, people that you know have been asking about training. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Okay. So just while we're waiting for any other questions, so I'll just say one more time. So make sure that if you haven't already that you've clicked on that, uh, WhatsApp broadcast link. And also I've been told to make sure, uh, that you save the number. So don't just uh, join the WhatsApp link. Make sure that you also save it. You can call it the Momentum Organizers number, mm -hmm. uh, Momentum, uh, whatever you can, whatever you want to call it, so that you remember that number. Um, because if you don't save that number, then I think there it causes some issues. Right. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure what those issues are. Yeah. Um, so before we before we wrap up, uh, the big question that I wanted to ask everybody was: Now that you've seen Holly, uh, oh, what, we've got one more question, so we'll, we'll try that. What about if we identify a marginal where there is a lack of canvassing sessions, Canterbury, for example? So, um, as Holly mentioned, the community organizing unit is already organizing trainings like this uh, in most of the key marginals. So I'd be quite surprised if they weren't doing something in Canterbury, mm. or they certainly have been before. Um, but I think if you wanted to organize a training and it was you know, for your mates or somebody else, I don't think that, that should stop you at all. Um, so yeah, if you're, if, even if you're in a marginal, I'd say because you're probably going to be doing it on a smaller scale than maybe the COU or, or us will be doing it. Um, I think you should absolutely go for it. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously if you want to organize a training and you want to make it public, definitely chat to your CLP because they they might be able to help you get people there. Um, so before we all go, I wanted to ask everybody now that you've, um, yeah, we can definitely do that, Jenny. That's no problem. 
Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, can we just find out how many people, now that they've seen Holly kind of walk you through how you might do the training, how many people would, uh, are gonna actually go away now and plan their own Let's Go training in their communities? Can we just get a couple of people maybe saying yes, big capital letters or woohoo or whatever it is? Oh, we've got Jane we saying amazing. yes, we've got Evelina. Maddie saying yes, we've got yes, Evelina ben, saying yes. Oscar, here we go. Here we this go. Jenny saying yes. Great, great. This great. is perfect. A little one Laura, at your house. great. This is super exciting. Yeah, Laura's so having good. a little one at her house. Fantastic. <laughs> You guys oh, have got one plan for Tuesday. Merlin's already got one plan for Tuesday. Oh, I had it at the game. We were yeah, too yeah, late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great, guys. Well, okay, Fantastic. so absolutely make sure that you're in that WhatsApp group. Uh, and if you are, make sure that you put that event on my campaign map so that we know that you're doing it so that it makes us feel good. But more importantly, it means that other people know that you're also doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, make sure you keep an eye out for messages from us from the broadcast list. We'll be keeping you up to date with the everything that we're doing and we'll definitely be letting you know when dialogue comes out. And um, yeah, thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, hopefully we will see you in the next call. Thanks guys. Thank you very, very much.